This isn't good architecture, nor is this. Let me explain. A good sized kitchen allows for growth. Quickly one person turns into two. Those two people quickly multiply into three, if not even four. Good architecture is never about the building, it's actually about the people that use it. Having an excessive amount of space for just one person is an overkill. Having stairs for somebody that can't walk is an oversight. So how do we combat this? We need to stop thinking about mass production architecture. One size does not fit all, nor will it ever fit all. We need to start thinking about the individual user and the longevity of the architecture itself. Here's an example. Six months ago, I ruptured my Achilles tendon. In layman's terms, I broke my leg. For three months, I hobbled up and down these very stairs, trying not to land on my face. Before the accident, I was considered a fit person. I used to go to the gym every single day. But it didn't matter how much upper body strength I had, I still continued to fall on my face multiple times and continued to hurt myself. Situationally speaking, there's a front door downstairs, there is the stairs, and then the entire house is on the first floor. There is nothing on the ground floor. So how do we make good architecture? This is a very specific example that I'm giving you guys. It's about a house that is entirely upstairs with absolutely no future-proofing thought behind it. We might not hurt ourselves in our lives, but we will eventually grow old. So having the entire house upstairs just doesn't work. Having potentially a simple guest room downstairs where somebody might stay in a situation like this is a much better improvement than the current situation. This kitchen, for example, is fit for my purpose. It isn't fit for every purpose. If you think about it, it's a small house with a very, very large kitchen. There's no overhead cupboards because that would be wasted space. The cooktop itself is small because why on earth would you have a 900 wide cooktop for a very small house? The bench tops seem excessive to most, but again, it's fit for my purpose because I utilize this space quite often. Having said that, this kitchen wasn't designed by me, it wasn't designed for me, but it was carefully thought out to be able to interpret and understand multiple human life cycles and to be able to provide longevity in the architecture that it sits in. As we already know, the kitchen is the heart of every single home. So why is it that more often than not, people cheap out or sacrifice when it comes to the kitchen? By taking the time to design this properly, we take bad architecture and give it longevity, eventually creating it into good, useful architecture. A good sized kitchen allows for growth. Quickly, one person turns into two. Those two people quickly multiply into three, if not even four. Understanding the human life cycle is important to understanding good architecture. But if we were to sit here all day and just talk about the life cycle, this video would go forever. So we're gonna make this very quick. As babies, we require the smallest amount of space. But if you haven't figured it out already, we quickly grow out of it. At this stage of life, your parents usually wanna be very close to you. Sometimes this is possible, sometimes it's not. But what we do know is it leads to side-by-side -side bedrooms, which does become a problem later down the track. Production line designs always produce problems. Eventually, you want freedom and you want your own space, which consequently or not, usually means distance. Regardless of the situation, those spaces will eventually become empty. So in the long run, their main purpose is going to be to collect dust. This video isn't a solution for good architecture. It's merely there to open your eyes.